Waterways, whether they are natural or modified to improve drainage, will benefit from careful planting of the riparian areas, the strips of land alongside the water. Plant species will vary with location, but the basic approach is the same for most sites. First step I do is I measure the site, then I calculate how many plants we need. Uh, while I'm out measuring a site, I will uh, have a, a, a close look at it, looking for any uh, pre-existing native vegetation, because there's nothing worse than replacing native vegetation with something that you think that should be there. There's a number of plant communities around the uh, Canterbury Plains, so it's important if you want your planting to do well to get uh, expert advice uh, about what you should be planting. If you plant the wrong things in the wrong place, uh, you'll have uh, poor success. Before planting, it's important to prepare the site well. For flat areas away from drain banks, we tend to do a blanket spray, complete knockdown. Uh, that gets rid of all of the competition. Whereas on a, on a drain bank, we do spots. We spray spots, usually a metre in diameter, and the reason for that is to keep the soil on the bank. If you spray all the vegetation and it's gone, then you've just got bare soil, the next flood, it's all in the river. We're taking all the weeds away because uh, particularly grasses are strong competitors for uh, moisture and nutrients, and the taller broadleaf species compete for light. And with Canterbury's typically low rainfall, they need all the water they can get. You want to use a chemical that's going to do the job, obviously. Uh, but you also want to be sure that the chemical you're using isn't going to be residual and stick around in the soil. That can cause problems for your plants later on. It's very important to follow all the uh, safety instructions. You would have noticed I was wearing a lot of personal protective equipment. Uh, you also need to be familiar with the manufacturer's recommendations, which means reading the label. You can also get your hands on a has note or a material safety data sheet, which will help you understand all of the safety requirements for the chemicals you're using. I use a fairly bright red dye, it's vegetable based. By putting a dye in, you avoid missing patches. Uh, it's also beneficial to come back and do a follow-up spray after six weeks or so, catch any bits that you've missed or any, uh, any weeds that have been resistant. If you've left your site long enough, if you've sprayed early enough, it'll be nicely rotted down like that. So all those roots are rotted down, easy to get a spade into the ground, you'll find a lot easier to plant. Plant choice, site preparation and aftercare are vital, but it's also very important to plant the plants well. First of all, I remove the, um, the dead vegetation from the surface. And the hole that we dig is typically twice the size of the root ball of the plant we're putting in. Put all the soil in one place. What you want is uh, the plant in the ground so that none of the potting mix is above the level of the ground. So now to get the plant out of the pot, give the pot a bit of a squish. That helps get the roots off the side of the pot. The shake upside down over the hole. What we don't do is grab onto the top and yank it. That damages the roots. Just give the roots, if they're root bound, just a little bit of a scrape. Much like teasing them out. What you don't want to do is do that with uh, manuka or kanuka because they don't like root disturbance and it will kill them. I've got a furt tablet here, it's a uh, slow release 20 gram furt tablet. It goes in the bottom of the hole just to one side, not in contact with the roots because it will burn them. And the soil goes back in and you break it up as it goes back in. So all the soil back in, pushing it down as you go, breaking it up. ball of the foot just pressing it down and now we put the, um, the guard on. This guard is made out of uh, sheep bags so it's wool, it's biodegradable. So it goes on facing one way and then when you fold it in half it makes a little square. What we do is we put three canes in, lining them up through the slot and then pushing them in and we angle them out a little bit and if the ground is particularly hard, you can use a mallet to drive them in. So once you've got three canes in, you take your sleeve, reach over the plant,
capture those three canes, pull it down to the ground. And you want to make sure all of the foliage is inside the sleeve. Because if the foliage is sticking out underneath, when there's herbicide applied to the surrounding ground, it's going to catch those leaves and kill the plant. So then you put your uh, fourth cane in, and that tightens it up, makes it square. Just check and make sure that all of your canes are down correctly. Pull it down at the bottom, and that's your plant planted. We use plant protection on our plants. They help to control weeds and um, conserve moisture around the base of the plant. That's what the weed mat portion component of these things is about. They also have a, a sleeve, and that's got uh, a couple of different uses as well. It uh, protects the plant from spray drift and also stops uh, rabbits and hares from eating the plant down to the ground. It doesn't stop them from eating the top of the plant, but it certainly stops them from completely killing it. Once the plants are in the ground, after a bit of time, the weeds will come back and they'll come back bigger and badder than ever. So you've got to keep them under control to ensure that uh, moisture and nutrients and light are getting to your plants. So the way we do that is we spray the, the weeds. We kill them all off again. And we usually do that for two years after planting. And we need to do that about four to six times a year. Before you start spraying your weeds, maintenance releasing we call it, um, you want to have a good look at your site, see what the weeds are so that you can match the chemical to the weeds. You've got to be, be sure that you're going to be killing the weeds. You want to make sure that any weeds that are inside the sleeves are pulled out from underneath and laid on the ground so that as you're spraying all the weeds you get those ones as well. Make sure that your uh, spray nozzle is nice and low, no higher than about 200 millimetres off the ground. Uh, that, that cuts down the chance of spray drift and uh, another way of avoiding spray drift is to use uh, an air inducted nozzle which makes the droplets nice and big and cuts down um, fine mists. Uh, you want to avoid spraying on very windy days. Obviously the, the wind will pick up the spray and move it around to places you don't want it. If you're maintaining plants on a, on a drain bank or a stream bank, again, uh, like with the preparation, you don't want to knock down all the vegetation you just want to spray, release spray around the plants about a metre diameter. Uh, you'll eventually need to take off the plastic sleeves and for slow growing species that are palatable and you've got lots of hares and rabbits around you might have to leave it on for anywhere up to three years and maybe even longer but for fast growing species like flax and toy toy and some of the carexes you can have them off after one year sometimes depending on the site if they're growing fast enough. Of an overall project, about 50% of the cost, if you're using a contractor, is the aftercare maintenance, with 50% being site prep and plant installation and supply. And of the planting portion of that project, about 50 to 60% will be labour costs and 40 to 50% will be materials. Uh, of the maintenance, 90% of that will be labour and 10% will be materials. Of course, alternatively, you can use uh, volunteers, friends, family, do it yourself to get the planting done. But it's strongly recommended that you either do the spraying, the aftercare maintenance spraying yourself, or get a contractor to do that. For the ongoing success of your project, it's really important that you do the maintenance really well, which means keeping on top of the weeds and keeping that competition down. The better you do that, the quicker your plants will grow and you'll get to what we call touch canopy sooner. Touch canopy is when the whole lot of the plants have coalesced into one, one mass and they're providing good shade on the ground and keeping down the weed competition underneath the canopy. Uh, once you've got that, you can start thinking about enrichment planting uh, and that's things like climbers and ferns uh, and um, tender species. Once you've got a good habitat, good canopy, lots of variety, lots of biodiversity in there, it'll become much more attractive to native birds and insects. Uh, and then you'll start to see a lot more of the, the bellbirds and the, and the wax eyes and fantails. Riparian restoration is a long-term project and needs commitment. 
with the right plants planted carefully and well maintained, particularly in the first few years, you can expect a successful outcome. Help and advice is available from local councils and community groups.